Hi, this is JD with a new edition of Weekly New Spills, a bouquet of hand-picked events in last seven days from across the planet. I would request you to like and share these weekly news stories, subscribe to my channel and put in your valuable comments. Your comments will be a guiding light in my endeavor. New spill 1. Vaccine inequality comes into stark focus during United Nations gathering. There is a glaring inequity in vaccine distribution. Some countries have vaccinated their populations and are on the path to recovery. For others, the lack of vaccines and weak health systems pose a serious problem. In Africa, fewer than 1 in 20 people are fully vaccinated. In Europe, 1 in 2 are fully vaccinated. This inequality is clearly unfair. In the title of this General Assembly, the words secure the rights of all peoples. I'm sure they, they would have said, what have you been doing these past seven to six years? The answer came from COVID-19. We have been playing equality, we have been playing unity, where one thing is to share objectives and quite another is to share vaccines. Vaccines that give life. It transpired that the provisions about equality, just as in an uh, advertisement, there is a footnote in fine print uh, stating the following. We are all people, we are all in one boat, but access to life boats is given first to first class passengers. Some countries have vaccinated their populations and are on the path to recovery. For others, the lack of vaccines and weak health systems pose a serious problem, Norway Prime Minister Emma Solberg said in a pre-recorded speech on Wednesday. In Africa, fewer than 1 in 20 people are fully vaccinated. In Europe, 1 in 2 are fully vaccinated. This inequality is clearly unfair. Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky likewise called out failures in sharing coronavirus vaccines during his speech Wednesday night. His hopes in 2020 of effective multilateralism and effective international solidarity dashed a year later, where one thing is to share objectives and quite another is to share vaccines. The inequality of COVID-19 vaccine distribution will come into sharper focus. Thursday, as many of the African countries whose populations have little to no access to the life-saving shots step to the podium to speak at the United Nations annual meeting of world leaders. New Spill 2 Angela Merkel. What will Germans miss out about the Chancellor? After 16 years, German Chancellor Angela Merkel is stepping down. In her time at the helm, she steered the country through a number of major European crises with her signature style of calm, rationality and caution. Born in West Germany but raised in the East, she spent her childhood here in the town of Templin before going on to study physics at university. The future German Chancellor entered politics at the age of 35 after the fall of the Berlin Wall and quietly climbed the ranks of the Christian Democratic Union, becoming party leader in 2000. Nuclear power in Germany. In 2014, she mediated between Russia and Ukraine. And in 2015, Angela Merkel made one of the most important decisions of her career, opening Germany's borders to thousands of refugees from Iraq and Syria, despite a public... Germans are preparing to say of Wiedenschen to Angela Merkel, whose 16 years as Chancellor will come to an end after the parliamentary election this Sunday. 
How does Germany feel about saying goodbye to a woman who looms so large in a global politics through the migrant crisis, the Eurozone crisis and the COVID pandemic? A looming question is, what will Germans miss about Mrs. Merkel and what hopes do they have for their next government after the elections? New Spill 3 Kashmir's Dal Lake choking with huge amount of sewage and weeds. The lake is a mixture of mossy swamps, thick weeds, trash strewn patches and floating gardens made from the rafts of reeds. Weeds, silt and untreated sewage are increasingly choking the sprawling scenic lake which dominates the city and draws tens of thousands of tourists each year. Dal Lake appears pristine in the area where hundreds of exquisitely decorated houseboats bob on its surface with tourists and honeymooners rent. In response to a right to information request, authorities said in 2017 that about 44 million liters or 11 million gallons of sewage was released into the lake from the city each day. In addition, about 1 million liters, that is 260,000 gallons of sewage, comes from the houseboats. New Spill 4 Impossible foods to launch meatless pork in US, Hong Kong and Singapore. Impossible Foods is finally making its plant-based pork product available to consumers. Here's where you can find it. The company is launching its Impossible Pork at Mamofuku Sambar at Pier 17 in New York City. It'll also roll out in more than 100 restaurants in Hong Kong starting October 4th, and then it'll debut in Singapore later this fall. Impossible had first revealed its Impossible Pork product at CES in 2020, where reviews from colleagues confirmed it does in fact taste like the real thing. Impossible has made some slight adjustments to the flavor since we tasted the product last year. Impossible food scientist Laura Kilman said, Since previewing Impossible Pork at CES 2020, we've improved the texture, lowered the sodium, and made some other minor changes to ensure springiness and flavor. You'll now be able to decide for yourself whether this plant-based product stacks up against traditional pork meat. Although Impossible Pork will only be available at a handful of dining locations to begin with, restaurants in Hong Kong and the US can now order Impossible Pork through major food service distributors. Impossible Foods, latest meatless products, is set to hit tables from Thursday. Plant-based pork that claims to be tastier and healthier than the real deal. The ground pork products will first be available in restaurants in the US, Hong Kong and Singapore. With the further plans for retail expansion in those markets in the coming months. It marks the California-based company's third commercial launch after ground beef and chicken nuggets as it seeks to solidify its position in the growing plant-based protein space. Speaking in a first-on interview ahead of the launch, Impossible Foods President 
Dennis Woodside told that the pork alternative could beat the real deal in both taste and nutritional value. New spill 5. Hears will be able to get into the United States more easily and whose trip just got harder. If you were waiting to travel uh, to our neighbors in the South, well, the United States is planning to lift travel restrictions on all fully vaccinated foreigners starting in November. But the new rules will require adult visitors to show proof that they have received both shots. CBC's Magda Gabor Selassie is on the story, and she joins me live from Washington. So it's a new policy. What more do you know about it and how it might affect Canadian travelers, Magda? So as you said, visitors from abroad will have to prove that they're fully vaccinated before boarding a plane to the U.S. Now, this is especially a big deal for, for visitors from Europe, China, India. In, in those places, people have been up against a travel ban. But it's not just, you know, having to prove that they're fully vaccinated. There are several other things that visitors will also have to do, including getting a COVID test uh, up to three days before traveling. And of course, that test will have to be negative in order for them to, to continue on. Now, for Canadians traveling to the U.S. by plane, that has been a reality up until now. You get a COVID test mm -hmm. up to three days before. It has to be negative. Once you're here, you don't have to quarantine. But it, it, this policy, this new policy that will apply to all uh, foreign travelers, Travel bans put in place early in the pandemic by presidential proclamation have barred foreign nationals arriving from China, Iran, Europe's Shenzhen area, the United Kingdom, the Republic of Ireland, Brazil, South Africa and India. For the first time in more than a year in many cases, vaccinated foreign nationals who have been in those countries in the 14 days before entering the United States will soon be allowed in with proof of vaccination and a negative COVID-19 test taken within three days of their flight. Currently, a negative COVID-19 test or proof of having recently recovered from COVID-19 allows unvaccinated international travelers who were not affected by travel bans to enter the United States. The new rules will require adult foreign nationals to prove proof of vaccination and a negative COVID-19 test result taken within three days of their flight. Fully vaccinated according to US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention includes those who have received vaccines approved for use in the United States as well as those listed for emergency use by the World Health Organization that may or not yet have received such approval in the United States such as the AstraZeneca vaccine. New spill 6. Pfizer says kids 5 to 11 can be vaccinated against COVID. Elementary schools could soon be better protected from COVID. Pfizer announcing today that its vaccine is safe and effective for children between the ages of 5 and 11. A trial of 2,000 kids showed they developed a strong immune response using one-third the dose given to older age groups. As pediatric COVID cases in the U.S. have jumped 240 percent since July, outbreaks causing more than 2,000 school closures across 40 states since the start of the school year. This fact but first, all eyes are on the FDA. Once they have the data, a decision could be just weeks away. This week, Pfizer released promising news in the effort to end the coronavirus pandemic, saying its COVID-19 vaccine works for young children of age 5 to 11 and that it will seek U.S. authorization for this age group soon, a key step towards beginning vaccination for youngsters. The vaccine made by Pfizer and its German partner, BioNTech, already is available for anyone 12 and older. But with kids now back in school and the extra 
contagious delta variant causing a huge jump in pediatric infections many parents are anxiously awaiting vaccination for their younger children that is all for today thank you and goodbye for now see you in my next news period